Thanks for joining me uh, today, um, this afternoon. My name is Ali Zako. I'm a techno-functional consultant with Ably Pro. And uh, this is the sixth video uh, webinar that we're conducting in a series where we're talking about Salesforce field servers. Uh, today's topic, we're going to be talking about scheduling policies and everything that that involves. Um, so, we're going to talk about um, what is a scheduling policy within a uh, field service. We'll talk about the various work rules that we have and how they uh, define a scheduling policy. Then we'll talk about um, service objectives that meet your particular business needs and policies. And then we'll go, we'll just give an example of, of configuring a emergency dispatch policy. And then we'll also look at another way of looking at and viewing and configuring scheduling policies within the uh, guided setup. So scheduling policies. Um, scheduling policies are a set of rules and objectives that guides the schedule optimizer in its decision, basically how it schedules the service appointments. Um, and they're used to promote or de-emphasize factors like business priorities, travel times, customer preferences. Um, and once again, we look at those um, more in detail um, as we go along. Um, so basically, scheduling policies, they're made of two elements, work rules and service objectives. Um, work rules refine the list of candidates for a service appointment by rejecting service resources that don't meet any rules or don't meet the rules. So um, it's an elimination process. So you select service resources that are eligible to perform the work, and that's basically a base. Um, next, what we what is used is service objectives um, represent scheduling goals. Um, you can give weight to each objective and give them more or less importance per your business needs and objectives. Um, and as we go along in the demo, that'll make sense. So what we're gonna do is actually, we will jump into the demo, into the org and have a look. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the scheduling policies here. So scheduling policies, we want to go to the field service admin app and then scheduling policies. And then here we want to look at all. Now, these are the default scheduling policies that are included in the managed package for field service. So we have customer first, emergency, high intensity, and uh, soft boundaries. So customers first is it's a well-rounded policy where it minimizes uh, travel time, preferred resources. Um, and there's a list of things that we'll look at them in, in a minute. Um, emergency is um, basically the scheduling um, service objectives. They aren't, in, they are, they aren't many, and there's very minimal uh, work rules where you can get work done. So that's what that is. High intensity is, once again, it's kind of similar to emergency. But this would be for, um, let's say there's a storm and now you need to uh, make the work rules and the service object objectives a little less strict to be able to perform the work and be able to schedule service appointments and get the work done. Um, soft boundaries is the same essentially as customer first, except here um, it'll factor in your um, primary and your secondary um, territories where you can schedule service appointments and you and utilize resources uh, in different territories basically so what we're going to do is now we're going to just look at um, work rules so we're going to click on work rules over here once again we want to click on all and there's quite a few work rules that we have there's a total of 14 so we're going to just go through them one by one so let me just do something here. So the first one that we have is um, active resources. So this is, all, all this does is when it 
when so once again what is a work rule a work rule is you're looking at the available resources uh, you know field technicians that are eligible to perform the work so that's out of what your work rules are so what you would do is you would select the pertinent work rules that fit for your particular policy that you're looking to build so active resource all that is is look at your resources that are active and are available so if you had an inactive resource they wouldn't be factored in so that's an easy one due date um is you're scheduling a service appointment uh before the due date so this is one of the a work rule that is a default in most um, scheduling policies um earlier start permitted um service appointment schedule start is equal to or later than the earliest start permitted um and this once again is included in the um in the standard scheduling policy um excluded resources so if you have a a resource that is excluded um on a to be able to perform a service appointment on the work order or on the account that service resource will not be factored in um, for that uh, for that policy. So you're excluding that particular individual from being able to be allocated or given that service appointment. Match skills, um, this is just where, uh, you know, on the, the work order, on the service appointment, you have particular skills that are listed and this, the, the technician or the service resource must have those skills as well as the to be able to be able to perform that work. So that's what match skills is. Match territory is is your primary um, territory is for that work order, that technician, that service resource has to have that matching, has to have the same um, territory. So that's what it what a matching territory is. Um, maximum travel from the house, from the home, pardon me, is it's a setting for the maximum distance of travel time between uh, a resource's home base or any appointment assigned to the resource. Um, it's a way of just minimizing the travel time that a technician has from the home base. So you could define it as you don't want them traveling more than 24 miles, 25 miles, 50 miles, whatever the case may be. Next, we have a required uh, service resource. So here on the account or on the work order, we're specifying a technician, a field resource individual that is required. So if, if, if on the work order or on the account, you have a required um, resource specified, um, then that person has to be able to perform that work. Um, so that's once again, you're enforcing a, uh, a work rule so that only that technician can perform the work. Um, next is resource availability. Uh, this ensures the resource is available to perform the work um, for a service appointment. So it factors in things like um, scheduled bakes, breaks, um, account travel time, accounts for travel time, um, breaks, between service appointments and things of that nature. Uh, the next one down we have is scheduled end. Ensures that the service appointment scheduled start is equal to or earlier than the arrival window end. Um, next, we have the scheduled start. Um, service appointment scheduled start is equal to or later than the arrival window start. Uh, window uh, arrival window start um, service appointment visiting hours so on the account or on the on the work order if you have vis if you have these visiting hours let's say on the account you have specified um, 7 a.m to 2 p.m so now the service appointment can only be scheduled between those hours um, so once again it's enforcing the um, the visiting hours or the, the the operating hours for the location that you're going to on the account. Um, 
service crew, resource availability. Um, all you're doing here is you're looking at to see if a crew is available to perform the work and look at the size of the crew that would be needed and see if the um, if a crew is available to perform that work. Um, working territories is enforces primary and secondary service territory memberships. Um, so this is similar to match territories, but um, they can't coexist. You can only have one. But working territory, it enforces primary and secondary service territory memberships. So that is that. What we're going to do next is we're going to look at the um, service objectives. So on the service objectives, there we have six service objectives. And once again, um, a service, um, a scheduling policy consists of work rules, which is what we just looked at, the 14. And the other thing that it, that it looks at is service objectives. So the service objectives are pretty self-explanatory. So we have ASAP, minimize overtime, minimize travel, uh, preferred resource, yeah, a preferred service resource, resource priority, and skill level. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to a go to the scheduling policies. So scheduling policies. We want to look at all of the ones. So once again, these are the ones that are out of the box with the managed package: customer first, emergency, high intensity, and soft boundaries. So let's click on customer first. And here it gives a description of what this is. This policy balances great customer service with travel minimization. Appointments are graded first by customer selections of a preferred employee and by the ability to provide the service as soon as possible. Travel minimization is considered as a second priority. So if you go to the related tab, we can see the work rules we have defined here. So we've got active resources, due date, early start, earlier start permitted, match skills, match territories, and required service resources. Now, if you look down here, if you look at the schedule, at the um, objectives, we have ASAP, minimize travel, preferred resource and uh, resource priority. And if you notice here, it's given a weightage. So for example here, ASAP is given a weightage of four, uh, minimized travel is a two, preferred resource is a four, and then uh, resource priority is a one. So if we wanted to, let's click on this one here. Um, exactly. So if you look at here, we have, for example, ASAP with a weightage of four. If we wanted to say change that or any of the weightages here, we could do edit and argument sake, we'll just change that to seven and now save it. <clears throat> so now ASAP will be given a high weightage in comparison to the other ones. Um, and then, for example, we've got we've got resource priorities. If you wanted to change that, to make that argument sake a two, and save that. <clears throat> so that's how you would change the weightage on the um, objectives. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is we we'll come back to your policies. So we've got emergency here, but let's say we want to create a, a new one. So we're going to create a, a new scheduling policy. So we're going to say, for argument's sake, we're just going to call this ASAP now. And we can put a description in there. We can just save the name. Related. 
So right now, by default, <clears throat> it added the uh, due date and earliest start. So if this is an emergency policy, let's say we would want to add in the we want to have in the match territory. Let's save that. We want to add another one in here. Resource availability. And that's pretty much it. So uh, we, need, we need to add one more active resource. So that's, that's a very simple way of just adding whatever policies you want, or work rules, pardon me, the work rules that you want to add to your policy. So right now, we don't have any anything defined under the actual um, objective. So let's click on new. And let's say ASAP, and we're going to give it a rating of five, five for its sake. So we've got our work rules defined for the scheduling policy for the schedule, and then also we gave it ASAP uh, A5. So that's the basic way that you would want to set up a um, how you would define and create a um, scheduling policy. So if we come back here and look at all. You can see that we've just added this one here ASAP now. The other way that you can uh, work with scheduling policies or create scheduling policies or modify scheduling policies is via the uh, guided setup. So once again, we're under the uh, field service admin. I'm going to click on field service settings. And we want to go to the guided setup. And then you're going to click on scheduling policies. And these are the um, the policies that we have. So we have the one that we have that we just created now, ASCP now. So if you click on that and we come down, you can see here the work rules that we have selected. And these are the service objectives that we have that are available to us. So like, for example, um, Minimal travel time. We didn't specify anything, so it's zero. We just specified ASAP and we gave it a five. So as we don't have anything, we only have uh, ASAP defined. We don't, we have a hundred here. But let's say argument's sake, we wanted to say minimize travel time and we gave it a 13. You can see here, once again, because we gave we, this is a 13 and this is a five, he gave it a larger weighting. And this is a, this is a nice way to, it's just a, a graphical representation. Um, so it's a nice way of just looking at it and understanding what you're giving priorities to and what you have. So ASAP is basically 28% and minimized travel is a 72% in terms of weighting. Here we have a number. And down here, we we have a uh, percentage representation. Um, if we wanted to give, minimize overtime, we could specify that. And the minimize overtime now is at 18%. So if we wanted to, we could just, I'm seeing if there's a save button here. I don't think there is, but it's not showing up for me. And basically, what you can do is you could do the same thing for Customer first, and you can you can specify um, the work rules. You can add them. You can take and you can exclude and you can exclude them also. So and then if you come down to service objectives again, um, like for example, ASAP has a seven, and minimized travel is a two. So let's say we want to give minim minimized travel a higher weightage, and then ASAP slightly lower weightage. As soon as you do that, the uh, the graph will change, and you can see the uh, graphical representation of the weightings for your um, service objectives. The other thing that we want to do is we're going to go back 
to the field service settings. And we're gonna go to global actions and appointment bookings. So right here, you have the default scheduling policy. So out of the box, you have customer first defined. So if you want to change that to ASAP now, you can do that and then you can click on save. So this is globally. The other place that you can also define the default scheduling policy is if you go to the uh, dispatcher console UI and you can, the default scheduling policy is right here. And as you can see, customer first is uh, selected and you can change that whatever you need and then you can save it. So, so what I actually do is for the dispatcher console, we're going to go to change it to ASP, ASAP now and click on save. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the um, field service app. Maybe I have it already. I'm just going to refresh it. <clears throat> it didn't populate it by default, but the other place where you can see the um, scheduling policies is right here on the policy. So we have ASAP now here. And this allows you um, from a dispatcher's perspective, if things change in the day where, you know, in the morning you are dispatching and doing operations as customer first, now you've had an emergency or there's a storm and things have changed later on in the day, you can come and change your scheduling policy. And now everything that is scheduled, your work orders and your service appointments, you will use that policy, um, whatever you've selected to uh, manage the work and schedule the uh, service appointments. So that's the end of the demo. So if you have any questions, do let us know. Um, uh, so yeah, so, you know, thanks for joining uh, in the webinar today. Here is our contact information. If you have any questions or any anything, um, we're here to help you with once again, any 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 questions that you have specifically to do with uh, field service, Salesforce in general. Also, um, thanks for joining me today. I hope the information was useful for you and uh, have a good day. Thank you.